2019 was supposed to be the season where Renault finally started to catch and properly race the top teams in Formula 1 such as Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes. But in 2019, that just hasn't materialised. And after the quite embarrassing and controversial disqualification of the two Renault cars from the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix, 2019 is now a complete disaster. But where do Renault go from this disqualification and what is their future after that decision? Let's find out. Now before we get into Renault's future and what it means for them going into 2020 and 2021 and beyond, let's first look at the disqualification of the two Renault cars from the race in Suzuka. So we can properly determine and analyse what exactly happened in the decision that was made by the FIA and whether it was the right decision. So as you guys know, both Renault cars finished in the top 10 at the Japanese Grand Prix, but then Racing Point put in this protest against what they thought was a preset lap distance dependent brake bias system. Now guys, I'm not going to get into the details of this protest because I am about to do that in a few moments time, such as the exact rules and claims and whatnot. And of course, Racing Point believed that this was against the rules. So what the FIA did was upheld the protest and then properly investigated. As the stewards determined that the protest met Article 13 of the International Sporting Regulations. But in the following days in the build up to the official decision being made as to what the result was going to be for Renault, Racing Point continued to supply evidence. Evidence that Renault vehemently defended themselves against. And then after that, the FIA seized Renault's data, software and their ECU. Just to clarify as well, the ECU is a very important device. And simply what it does is controls, processes and transmit data from the car back to the teams. And this was brought in right after traction control was banned after 2007. And once the FIA analysed everything they could, it was now time for the decision to be made. But before we get into the actual decision, let's look at first the claims from Racing Point and look at exactly what they were claiming Renault were doing. So these are Racing Point's claims. According to them, Renault used its preset lap distance dependent brake bias system during the Japanese Grand Prix. And in their view, this would breach Article 27.1 of the Sporting Regulations. And they also believe the system is also a breach of Article 11.1.3, 11.1.4 and 8.6.3 of the Technical Regulations. Now I know you guys listening or watching right now are thinking, what on earth does all that mean? Well basically it's articles in the regulations for either Sporting or the Technical side that act as the rules for the championship and let's now get into those exact rules and what racing point thought Renault were breaking when it came to the regulations so article 27.1 of the sporting regulations is the driver must drive the car alone and unaided article 11.1.3 of the technical regulations state any powered device other than a rear brake control system which is capable of altering the configuration or affecting the performance of any part of the brake system is forbidden. And then the next one, Article 11.1.4 states, Any change to or modulation of the brake system other than any movement from the front and rear air ducts whilst the car is on track must be made by the driver's physical input or by the rear brake control system and may not be preset. And then the final one of the technical regulations is Article 8.6.3. And that states that any alterations of the driver's controls may be only commanded by direct, deliberate or primary driver actions. Hopefully I've just made it there pretty clear to you guys what rules Racing Point believe Renault were breaking. And this is the final claim of Racing Points which is the system's operation can be seen via onboard video footage from the car. It shows the brake balance display changing with no input from the driver. Now what they're referencing is a video, a visor cam video, earlier on just before pre-season testing of Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault. Now I'll post a link to this video in the description. I can only of course show screenshots but if you do watch the video and I've got some screenshots to really show this the best way I can as well. 
The brake bias is indeed changing without Daniel Ricciardo doing it himself. And I'll do now guys a comparison to show you how the brake bias on the Renault in this video is moving without Daniel Ricciardo doing it himself. So on the approach down to turn 4 at the end of the first sector it is at 0.0%. And then as he exits that corner you can see the number is now different and Daniel Ricciardo has not done it himself. And you can watch the video again in the description and it shows this clearly. Now just to compare to another car that I don't think is using this system, let's look at the Alfa Romeo and the visor cam of Kimi Raikkonen. Again, I'll post a video to this clip, but if you do watch it, and I do have some screenshots here, on this short installation lap, Kimi Raikkonen does not change the brake bias once, nor does the brake bias change on its own. And I believe the brake bias is where it says 61.0% on his steering wheel. Now if I am wrong, then I am wrong, but if that is the case that that is the brake bias, then that's clear evidence that Alpha are not using this system and the differences between a car that is and is not using it, or at least according to Racing Point. But still Racing Point's claims were pretty exact and were on good enough grounds to have a protest. But let's look at Renault's defence against the claims of Racing Point. The first one is, Renault did not use a lap distance dependent brake bias system. They also say the brake balance indicated on the dash may change due to the operation of a specific system. But they also make clear that Renault does not deny the possibility of this system being in use on their car. Which is quite interesting. And the final bit of their defence is that Racing Point did not produce any conclusive video evidence. And that Racing Point have speculated on the use of the system by Renault based on allegations from a former Renault employee who now works for Racing Point. Now let's go through the defence one by one because it isn't good at all. If we start off with the first one, it is quite vague for a defence. And also they did not say that it was not preset. They only said that it was not distance dependent. So interesting there, but their first argument for me was quite poor because they didn't actually explain why they weren't using it. They just said, we're not using it, with no explanation as to why. Their second argument is fine, and as I'll show later, it is actually a good argument where they say the brake balance indicated on the dash may change due to the operation of a specific system. Again, we'll get onto that later once we get into the decision by the FIA. But as they continue in this defence to be adamant that they are not using it, they also go on to not deny the possibility of the system being in use anyway. Which again is rather interesting. And then the final line of defence was really quite poor by Renault. First off where they say Racing Point did not produce any conclusive video evidence. Well clearly they did with this video. And you can quite clearly see the brake bias going up and down without a driver input. And I'm pretty sure that is conclusive video evidence of that system in use. And then the second part of this argument actually doesn't make that much sense. Because they go on to say that the Racing Point team are speculating on the use of this system by Renault. Because of allegations from someone who used to work for Renault. But as Roman Grosjean came out and said, they've been using this since 2014. So they can't throw out the argument that this former Renault employee is... Supplying Racing Point with confidential information when this could have happened any time in the last five years. And you also can't throw the argument out that maybe the Renault employee wasn't put on gardening leave long enough. Because again, they've been using it since 2014 so this was inevitable that it was going to get out. So Renault's defence here is actually very very poor and actually contributes to the decision. And really Renault's defence is mostly them just screaming fake news and stop looking and go away. And their reaction to the decision on Twitter also screamed of that as well. But here is the FIA decision from the stewards. So first off, the rear brake controller system used by Renault is an integral part of the control system referred to in Article 11.9 of the Technical Regulations and is in compliance with Article 11.1.3 and 11.1.4 of the Technical Regulations. Also, before we go on to the rest of the FIA's decision, let's just clarify what Article 11.9 of the Technical Regulations are. 
What it states is the pressure in the rear braking circuit may be provided by a powered control system as long as the driver has some input. The system is not preset nor lap distance dependent. Renault's drivers also use buttons on the steering wheel to control the brake balance. The stewards conclude that Renault used an innovative solution that does not breach the technical regulations. And at this point, Renault are probably thinking that they've got away with it. But of course, they didn't as. However, the stewards did find that the Renault system operates as a driver aid and that breaches Article 27.1 of the Sporting Regulations. As it saves the driver from making many adjustments during a lap to the brake balance. Thus why they were disqualified from the results in Suzuka. And of course since then Renault have thrown out plenty of arguments such as technically it's not illegal. And yes that is correct it was not deemed illegal by the FIA but because it operates as a driver aid it is illegal. And the only way it wouldn't be illegal at all is if the car was not driven by a driver. Because it's pretty clear that it's a driver aid as it's helping the driver as it says making many adjustments to the brake balance during a lap. So it is pretty clear that Renault did break the rules. Now we haven't heard any rumours about Renault possibly being investigated further because it has come out again that they've been using this for a long time since really the V6 Turbo era began. Even back to the days when they weren't even Renault, when they were Lotus. And to be honest, I think an investigation should go ahead for 2019, but I'm not sure you should do it for all the years since 2014. Because that would be very time consuming and also it would wreck the championship since 2014. But in my opinion in 2019 something should be done about it but I don't think that'll actually happen. But with Renault I mean come on it's the only time they broke the rules. I mean they've never knowingly cheated in the past. I mean can you guys think of any time where the Renault F1 team has knowingly broke the rules to gain a result? I mean, I can't, I just cannot think of one. Oh wait, yes I can, Singapore 2008. Now I'm not going to get very detailed into this story right now because that is one video on its own, but I will quickly sum up what Renault did. So what Renault did was tell Nelson Piquet to crash on purpose so they could cause a safety car to benefit Fernando Alonso who was on a three-stop strategy. So Fernando could have a chance of winning the Grand Prix and that's exactly what he did. And this went on of course to be Crashgate and the first case of race fixing in Formula 1. And then the following year Flavio Briatore was banned from Formula 1 and so was Pat Simmons but only for about 5 years. Flavio would get a gentler sentence later on but vowed to never come back to Formula 1. And Renault also lost all of their sponsors for obvious reasons. And that is not the only time they broke the rules. As during the days of Spygate, Renault were also found to have confidential information. This information was about the layout and dimensions, the fueling system, the gear assembly, the oil cooling system, the hydraulic control system and novel suspension component of 2006 and 2007 McLaren. These claims occurred after a former McLaren employee then went to the Renault team. But in the end, their punishment turned out to be quite light. But maybe it's just the Renault company in Formula 1 that's the problem when it comes to cheating and knowingly breaking the rules to gain an advantage. I mean, if you look at the history of Enstone, they've had more than just Renault. They've had Lotus, they've had Benetton, they've had Tolman. So let's not just pin this on Enstone because I'm sure they have been very good boys in the past. Wrong again. They also did the Enstone team when they were Benetton break the rules back in 1994. After many suspicions of illegal electronic systems on the car, the FIA investigated Benetton midway through 1994. And they discovered launch control on the Benetton. But they could not prove that Benetton ever used it even though they probably did. After getting some suspiciously great starts to races. But no traction control was found, only launch control. But it didn't end there. As also in 1994, Benetton removed their fuel filters to quicken up the refueling process. And of course, that ended well, leading to the conclusion of mine that this Enstone based team that's been in Formula 1 for a very long time has a culture of pushing the rules if not breaking them. Because that's now the fourth example of an F1 team at Enstone breaking the rules. 
Rules that they knew were there, and they knew that if they were found out, they'd be punished. And it's not exactly great, is it, for this great company in Renault to be labelled again, cheaters. But what about the future of Renault going forward? What does this mean for Renault in 2020 and 2021? Because 2019 has been a very poor season considering the amount of money and resources they put in. Well, it's pretty simple. In 2020 and 2021, if they do not reach their goal, whatever that goal is, they will be out of Formula 1 very quickly. Because with the amount of money Renault have spent to try and get this team back up to the front of Formula 1, eventually, and you're probably going to start seeing this by the end of 2019, this is going to be a loss of money for Renault. And once it starts getting to the point where they're not improving, but they are still putting in tons of cash, then of course Renault are going to leave because it would make no sense to continue putting in an extortionate amount of cash into this team for them to do nothing more. And at the moment, to be honest, you can tell that Renault are really pushing for 2021 to be the season where it all changes for them. By going for the big flashy signings in Pat Fry now for the technical department. These may look good now, but if they don't come up with a good enough car in 2020 or 2021, this means nothing. And that's why the pressure is really on for Renault in the next two years to get it right with also drivers Daniel Ricciardo and Esteban Ocon. But what do I think their future in Formula 1 is going to be? Will they be a success come 2021 or will they drop out of Formula 1 by the end of 2021? To be honest, with the way Formula 1 is at the moment, unless Renault dedicate the whole of 2020 to development for 2021 and produce a great car, I think Renault will be gone from Formula 1 completely as not only a works team but engine supplier by the end of 2021. Even producing a car for the new set of regulations in a couple years time that is a bit better won't be enough. By that new era in 2021 in Formula 1, Renault have got to be competing for race victories. Anything less at this point will be a complete failure. Because remember, Renault haven't just started up, they've been going the works team since 2016. And by this point in their development, they should probably be quite a bit ahead of where they are right now. And that is what is making the next couple of years so pressurised for the Renault team, because if they don't get it right, and don't push this team way further up the grid, then it's all done. And it shouldn't even come as a surprise, guys, if Renault as a company do leave Formula 1, because they've done this plenty of times before, back in the Turbo era, in the 1980s, and also in the late 1990s as well. And the works team for Renault has been come and go ever since they came into Formula 1 at the end of the 1970s. But Renault are having a major board meeting at the end of this season to determine, I guess, their future. So maybe even they won't be in Formula 1 in 2021 after all. And they could quite easily pull the plug for the end of 2020. And let's be honest, if Renault do leave Formula 1, it's all their fault. They have had plenty of time since 2014, one, to build a competent enough power unit to win races on a regular basis. And they've had enough time to build a works team to being at a race winning level. So if the hammer does come down on their Formula 1 project, they have only themselves to blame. But guys, let me know in the comments section down below, what do you think the future for the Renault F1 team is? Will they stay past 2021 or will they be gone completely? Let me know in the comment section down below and also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button for more content like this. And until next time guys, it has been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.